No, no, me not go do this. Me not go do this. Hey! Rubbish. I'm in here, Minister D. Brown here. And I'm in here, accurate. You have to be a eagle in life, don't you? Hi! Hey everybody, it's Trissy. Yes, I know you've not seen me in a long, long, long. I think the last time I sat down and recorded something was about a year ago. Well, I sat down after that, but I didn't edit and put it out. Alright? So, how you guys been? Yeah, man. Well, guys, I have been away from this YouTube platform. That camera look lean. No, no, no. I'm never lean. Right. So I've been away from this YouTube platform for quite some time. Um, a lot has happened. Like, have my, have friends asking me, Tracy, why you not record anything? Why you not putting anything out? Let me tell you something. You see, see, life, life comes at you hard sometimes. Really, really hard. And I can tell you that that's what happened to me guys it look like say the spirit of judas released my people around me mm, let me tell you people who stayed at my house ate my food people that i went above and beyond for just betrayed me legit because i guess them I'm not exactly the one who fits in to any and every crowd. Um, and it's it's a bit difficult, I guess, for persons to understand who I really am. I can tell you that I'm very misunderstood. Very misunderstood. So I am often misjudged. But anyway, that's, that's just one of the things that happened. I mean, somebody really close to me, somebody that I took as a sister, um betrayed me in the worst way, slandered my name, came yeah, I mean, like just that person did well destroy my reputation. When that wasn't when that wasn't successful, the person tried some just a whole heap of stuff and lies and rumors and things. But I had to take some time out to really introspect, look at what role I may have played in that scenario and you know just check myself to see the things that I may have been able to do differently. Um I've also lost some people who were like family. Um, somebody entered the mix and then the same lies. And the thing about it is, to be honest, I don't know how to defend myself again. I don't know how to defend myself against lies. I really don't. So let me tell you. The lies were told and what can i say except that's a lie like you know if i have nothing to prove it there's absolutely nothing i can do that one is reached recent that one is recent like not too long happened so i'm still healing from that and i'm still dealing with losing a lot of things and people who were very close to me i went through a season where i didn't want to get out of bed and it wasn't just about people just life itself came at me um and i got tired like emotionally i was tired emotionally for the past year um majority of it i have spent doing the work of the lord ironically i i um I've just been working in my local church. I worked in my local church right through the pandemic. If you were watching the, the church's stream, you would have seen me working. I stood in position and that in and of itself took a lot out of you. Oh, well, out of me. Because let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Stop man. Yeah. Let me tell you something about church folk. Church folk will criticize you for what you're doing. But you see, when you walk away, they won't do it. They won't do it. The Lord will always raise up people to do things, you know. So, you know, but the people who fight you, 
they won't do it. Let me tell you, let me tell you something that I've come to understand. This is what's causing the problem. Barbie had puppies. Meet Athena. Look at the camera. Say hi. Say hi. You just saying I have no behavior. What you tasting? You don't have any behavior, you don't have any manners. The tail. Tell the people to say you don't have any behavior, you don't have any manners. Stop fighting me. You need to sit up here? Want to talk? Want to talk? Hello. This is a Jamaican also. You don't do that here. Ha! Where was that? And I was talking about people in church and church work overall. I'm going to sound a little classist, but I really don't care. At this point, I don't have anything to lose. What is the people you see in a church a fight over church position? Check them. Check them. Depending on the kind of church or the culture of the church, the people that fight over church work, they've never really achieved anything meaningful in their lives. Them now have no job or, you know, they have certain regrets. Or my friend would say, regrets. They come to church and that is where they find their identity. There's the people like me now where I've been in this particular ministry for coming on 17 years and I can tell you that this is where the Lord, this is the ministry that the Lord used to develop me, to shape my life, you know. I can tell you that the word that I've received, the words of wisdom and the sermons preached and the teachings really helped to shape my life. A lot of the things that I had on my life plan, the, the one I made when I was younger, I achieved those things in my 20s, my early 20s. And I can tell you it's because of the teaching that I received under this ministry. At this point, my aim in this ministry is to ensure that another young person can come up and a little more from this, they can have the same testimony. I don't need a title to do that. I don't need a position to do that. I'm a kingdom builder overall. Any, anybody who knows me and who, whoever invited me to their church will know that if you invite me to your church and you have something to do, or if you're short a hand, you legit can just say, Tracy, help me out with this, and I'll be there. Me just get up out of my seat Wherever you put me, me take off my heels, put on my flats, work. I work in the kingdom of God. I work. I put in the work. I put, I don't, me not busy, me tell you something. One of the Bible believing church, serving our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, with the motive to win souls for God, with the motive to plunder hell and populate heaven. Yeah? May I work? Working, working. I will work and I will continue to work in the kingdom of God. But one of the things that I don't like, one of the things that I don't like, dear church people, go to school, achieve something, you're not too old. I know of, of, of grandmothers who went to school and got their, 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 their certification, their, their di diplomas. Right? I know of them who started their small businesses. It's never too late for you to start. Stop sitting down in a church and fight all people out of church, man. Ha! Huh? God is not pleased. God is not pleased. God is not pleased. Dear church people, God is not pleased with some of the things that we do. A few days ago, well, a few, yeah, a few days, yeah, almost a month ago, I made a post on Facebook. And I'm not looking for any likes because that season, that season has certainly passed certainly passed right let me tell you i have an acquaintance of mine who fell into some really deep waters because of church hurt yeah and it bothers me because of the level that that hurt came from some of us know better some of us need to know better we ought to know better some of us we ought to know better. We, we should be doing better. It is not the time for us to be tearing down people. 
It is not the time for us to be taking people, basically pushing people out of the church. The post that I made on Facebook said, Today I spoke with an acquaintance who told me of how badly she was treated by her church. I don't know the full story, I really don't, but I understood her hurt, I really did. It pained my heart as she has now found herself in a situation that could have been avoided. I mean, avoided how? I'm sorry. Apologize, man. Some of us as church folk, as Christians, as kingdom citizens, we're too bitter. Apologize. You must be able to sit down and search yourself and see where you may have contributed to a problem. You may have contributed to a particular action. You may have been a part of the problem rather than being a part of the solution. Right? Anyway, I, I went on to say, why am I posting this? Church hurt no normal. During a recent crusade, my pastor preached on offense in the church and explained that it is us as members who often push other members to the gate for the enemy to snatch them. Luke 17 verse 1, the NIV version says, Things that cause people to stumble are bound to come, but woe to anyone through whom they come. Some people are gatekeepers in the church, but instead of keeping folks in, they're actually keeping them out. Folks build so much strife and contention in the church. They are so quick to crucify and demonize others, totally negating the duty of love, forgiveness, and restoration. It would seem that the church has morphed into a place where evil hearts and intentions no longer get placed on the altar. Instead, they are hidden behind the quotation of scriptures and tongues and loud hallelujahs. Where is the part that we look into ourselves and see our faults? Hey, the beam in your eye is causing your brother to stumble. Your inclination to downgrade and judge, to act holier than thou, to be dismissive and condescending, to be scornful and pretentious. Things that you need to identify as existing in you, they are causing others to stumble. How many will make it back to Christ after you've caused them to stumble? Woe be unto those through whom the reason for others stumbling comes. What does this mean? If you fight the person out of their office in the church and they end up in sin, woe be unto you. If you treat them bad, gossip, condemn them and they fall, woe be unto you. Remember, not everyone is mature and can maintain their footing. Remember, some people are just one negative comment away from committing suicide. Remember, we are all pressing towards the mark. Remember, Jesus Christ died for all of us. Remember, Jesus has no assistance. Remember, our righteousness are like filthy rags. Remember, we should be plundering hell and populating heaven and not the other way around. Saints in Christ, the kingdom needs to get in line. Learn to pray for folks and stop holding their mistakes above their heads. Control your tongue. Most importantly, check yourself. We need a hard checkup. Check your motives. Check your approach. Check your intent. Let no evil be found in you. Repent. Stop justifying evil behavior. A summitan. No, no. Some is still. Mm -mm. You need deliverance. Yeah. So let us look into ourselves and find our fall. So let us try to rid ourselves of the dirty stone ways in Jesus' name. Listen to me. I make no apologies in him. I make no apologies. I find it so disheartening that a lot of us sit in church and there are so many dark places in our lives that we've not given Christ Jesus access to. There are so many hurts that we've not poured out our hearts on the altar to be healed from. I'm not perfect enough. Far from it. But I can tell you, I'm quick to apologize. I'm quick to apologize. I will tell you, I'm sorry. But I, listen, I will look into myself real fast. And I'll assess this. Plus the Holy, where is the Holy Spirit in all of this? Where is the Holy Spirit in all of this to convict you? And say, yo, you're wrong. He convicts me. He speaks to me.
Some persons, you'll never see them at an altar call. No, because they've gotten it all together. That's a, be, be honest with you. Be honest with you. Let me tell you, we know. We know. Just by virtue of how you treat us, we know. We know that your heart is full of unforgiveness. We know that you're bitter. We know that you're really hyping up yourself in church because you want position. We know that you don't really love people. We know that you don't really have a heart for the things of God. You have a heart to be identified by the pastor. We know. We know. Church, kingdom business, kingdom things is not a joke. God will defend his work. God will defend his work. When the Ark of the Covenant was taken from Israel by the Philistines, when, they, when the Philistines went out against Israel and won, and they captured the Ark of the Covenant, the word of God says that every city that they took it into, the people were struck with boils. It did not take anybody. God defended the thing that represented his presence because the Ark of the Covenant was not the presence of God. It was a representation. The Bible said that the Ark of the Covenant, even when they placed it beside their God, that God fell down on its face the first day. They put it back up the second and when they came back, this time the head and the arms of the statue was broken off. It had fallen to the ground and was broken off. God defended his work. It didn't take the prophet Samuel. It didn't take, the, it didn't take well, Samuel was... was just starting his prophetic career. Saul was not even yet king. It didn't take anybody. God defended himself. God will defend his work. God will defend his work. And I hope when he's defending his work. You will prosper as your soul prospers. Because you can't be so holy. You can't be so righteous every day of your life. And you have nothing to show. Where is your token of war? Where is your reward for your good work? Where is it? Listen, I'm a worship leader. And what anybody says about me won't change who God has said I am. And it will not change God's mind about me. But I can tell you, I have to daily search and submit my heart and my intent to Christ. Because I don't want him to take his spirit from me. When the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Saul did still have functioning at the office. Knowing very well. The prophet told you that God got no happy brother. God has rejected you. Don't let it get to that. Let us search ourselves. Let us look into ourselves. Catch up on yourself man. Go down in your devotion. How oh, all are we can at the same church and your prayer for me be smitten? For God strike me down. How oh, we can at the same church and you praying, you're praying against me. Where is the love? Why is it that as church folk, as 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 kingdom citizens, everybody can quote the scriptures except when it comes down to how we handle issues? It's as if people want to present church life as if it's perfect. It's not. We're all works in progress. We're all pressing towards the mark. It simply means none of us, we, we, nobody has attained. If you're still breathing this very oxygen, you are still pressing towards the mark. So why me I press, you are press and you want me for job? Dear church people, it don't look good. 
fix up that. Peace.